Hello and welcome to the report of Group 3. We're going to bring it to the medieval and renaissance period. So come on and let's learn something. Good morning everyone. My name is Jeptis Hernandez and I'm going to talk about the medieval art. The medieval art of the western world cover a vast scope of time and place over 1000 years of art in Europe and at certain periods in Western Asia and Northern Africa. It includes major art movement and periods, national and relig regional arts, generous revivals and the articles, the artist craft and the artists themselves. The medieval period of art History begins at the time of fall of the Roman Empire in 300 CE and continue until the beginning of the Renaissance in 14 CE. There were three major periods of medieval art, early Christians, Romanski, and Gothic. Types of medieval art. 1. Illuminated manuscript. 2. Metalwork, especially bronze art. 3. Silversmith and goldsmith and new forms of jewelry. C fa 5. Painting. 6. Fresco. 7. Final painting. 8. Embroidery and tapestry. Tapestry art such as bioix. Tapestry and ceramic art. Illuminated manuscript are handwritten books with painted decorations at that generally includes precious materials such as gold or silver. Metalwork, especially bronze art. Metalwork, useful and decorative object fashion, fashioned of various materials including copper, iron, silver, bronze, lead, gold, and brass. Painting. Painting is the practice of applying painting, pigment, color, or paint, pigment, color, or other medium to a solid surface. Fresco is a technique of mural painting executed, executed upon freshly laid. Painting panel. A painting, a panel painting is a painting made of a flat panel made of Wood, either a single piece or a number of pieces joined together. Ceramic art. Ceramic art is art made of ceramic materials, including clay. Medieval art is a uh, was produced in many media and works survived in a large number in sculpture, illuminated manuscript, stained glass, mat metal work, and mosaic, all of which have had a survival rate than other media. Now I will discuss about the prehistory era. Prehistory is the period that begins with the appearance of the human being about 5 million years ago and finishes with the invention of writing about 6,000 years ago. We can define prehistory as a period of human development during the time before the discovery of writing. Prehistory extends from the emergence of our first ancestors. Prehistory is divided into three periods, Paleolithic Age, Neolithic Age, and Metal Age. Paleolithic Age or the old stone age during this time human used stone to make tools and stone was used many times as part of the actual tool 
The first stone tools was used to meet people's three basic needs of food, shelter, and clothing. These were difficult times, there were no stores to buy food, and people had to cooperate in small groups to make clothing and shelter. To hand for food, early humans formed spears, first by sharpening the ends of sticks, but later by attaching a sharp stone spear tip to wood using animals in new. And what was Paleolithic art like? About 35 years ago, human beings started decorating cave with painting. This type of art is called cave art. So Paleolithic paintings has the characteristics. Animals such as deer, bison, horses, and mammoths were often represented. The paintings were realistic. The relief surface of the cave, the cave was used to give them volume. Several colors were used. Minerals were mixed with egg white to make the colors. Animal hair was used to make brushes. And next is the Neolithic Age or the New Stone Age. In Neolithic Age, human beings learned how to domesticate animals and cultivate plants. How did agriculture start? The discovery of agriculture took place about 11 years ago. Human beings observed that plants grow when seeds fill on the ground. This is how agriculture started. The last stage is metal ages. Human beings began to make metal objects. The first metal they used was copper, but it was not very strong. Later, they used to bronze and iron to make tools, weapons, and jewelry. Now let's move on to the major periods of medieval arts. The first is the early Christian period. The first part of the period during the lifetimes of the Twelve Apostles is traditionally believed to have been initiated by the Great Commission of Jesus, thought some scholars dispute its historicity and is called the Apostolic Age. The characteristic of early, of early Christian is use the same artistic media as the surrounding pagan culture, included fresco, mosaics, sculpture, and manuscript illumination. Early Christian art not only used Roman forms, it also used Roman styles. The popular style found paintings in Kotakams of Rome, which include most examples of the earliest Christian art. Early Christians also developed their own iconography. The first painting is the Good Shepherd in the Kotakams. One of the images represented the most in the art of Kotakams is the Good Shepherd. And the next painting is the Christ among his apostles, Kotakam of the Metelia, early 4th century. An early representation of Christ found on the Kotakam of the Metelia shows the figure of Christ flung by a group of his disciples. The Christian imagery might mistake this for an image of the Last Supper. Christ dropped in the classical garb holds as a scroll in his left hand, while his right hand is outstretched in the so-called and locotial gesture, are the gesture of the orator. Next painting is the sarcophagi. Early Christian sarcophagi are those ancient Roman sarcophagi carrying inscriptions or carving relating them to early Christianity. A wide variety of subjects are shown on the sarcophagi, with the most elaborate containing small cycles of narrative scenes from the Gospels and simpler ones symbols such as the cherub. Architecture of the early Christian is that when the early Christians were able to build their churches in public, they choose the high style architectural classicism of the Roman Empire. So my insights of the early Christian period is that for me, looking for early Christian artwork or just seeing it is inspiring. Also, when we see the images of Jesus, Jesus or an angels that make us realize about how religious we are, but we must need to know also what Christian art truly really means. And to know that the right Christian artwork is one that speaks to you no matter what the imagery. So good day everyone, I am Lionel Juanes and let's move on to Romanesque period. In Romanesque period, the Romanesque art is the major movement of medieval art. It also refers to the art of Europe of the late. 10th century to the rise of the Gothic style, 13th century. It is called Romanesque because a lot of architecture used to assemble the Roman buildings. However, the methods that were used to create a lot of the architecture were very different from the techniques that were used by the Romans. The term, the term Romanesque was also invented by the 19th century art historians. It is a fusion of Roman Carolinian 
and Italian Byzantine and local German traditions. The Roman style was also the first to spread across the whole of Catholic Europe and thus the first pan-European style since Imperial Roman architecture. So it is aimed to spread religions and bring people closer to God. In this period, the most representative buildings were churches, cathedrals, and monasteries. In Romanesque architecture, the use of symbols was very important. So everything had a message from the shape of the buildings to the materials and motifs used. And usually, the artists in Roman, Romanesque architecture were mostly anonymous craftsmen. Romanesque architecture is also distinguished by massive quality, thick walls, round arches, sturdy piers, groin walls, large towers, and decorative arcades. Now, let's talk about the characteristics of Romanesque architecture. So, the first one is the cathedral floor plan. In this period, they usually used the Latin cross plan in churches and cathedrals. So such cruciform churches were very common in the West during the Romanesque period. So the Latin cross plan have a nave with aisles or chapels or both, and transept that forms the arm of the cross. Two types of vault. So Romanesque cathedrals and churches usually use the barrel vault with rounded arches. So see the first pick, and the growing vault used when the two vaults met at the right angle. To cover the nave. So as you can see, the walls of Romanesque buildings are often of massive thickness with few and comparatively small openings. They are often double shells filled with rubble. The building material differs the building material differs greatly across Europe depending upon the local stone in the building traditions. Semicircular apses and round arches can also be seen in Romanesque architecture. General features of the Romanesque sculpture. Most Romanesque sculpture is pictorial and biblical subject. The sculpture, although not as outstanding as the Romanesque architecture, they apply the same pre-established codes and artistic scheme to provide a clear and educative religious message about the sacred word. The sculpture and the architecture both use the northern Roman elements. In Romanesque sculpture, the figures were not proportioned, so some elements or parts of the body were emphasized and it is mostly unrealistic and inexpressive. The composition of Romanesque culture, it always has the figure of Christ as the axis. This sculpture is one of the most famous sculpture in Romanesque. Images of Mary as the throne of wisdom are especially prevalent throughout the Roman Catholic eye. Mary as the throne of wisdom was a popular biblical theme represented throughout Romanesque culture. These associate the Blessed Virgin with glory and teaching, so Madonnas in these traditions are especially popular in Catholic imagery. In the facades, sometimes they were also decorated with sculpture, and this decoration was very important in tympanum of the main entrance. Romanesque painting so. This painting is characterized by a new formality of style, largely devoid of the naturalism and humanism of either its classical antecedents or its Gothic successors. So, in Romanesque painting, they uses the narrative of religious passages as a way to portray them in a simple sequence easy to understand by the spectator, especially by the illiterate population. So now let's tackle about the features of Romanesque painting. So, so in Romanesque painting, so figures are always forward facing, stylized, and heretic. So as you can see, the technique used here is very simple. It has no volume and perspective. So it is also rigid and schematic. It is also rigid and schematic and did not have background landscapes. Romanesque painting scenes are religious and intended to educate, so it's just like a Bible for people who can read since biblical scenes are what is mostly a paint sa kanina period. We're done with Romanesque period, so now let's move on to Gothic art. So, Gothic art was developed after the Romanesque in the 12th century. The style continued to be used well into the 16th century in some parts of Europe, while giving way to the Renaissance style earlier in some regions. So, the style was also developed in northern France due to its socio-economic, political, and theological reasons. Gothic main, Gothic main form of art was architecture. The most expressive medium for the Gothic style is architecture, especially cathedrals. 
The Gothic Cathedral represented the universe in microcosm and each architectural concept including the height and perfect ratios of the structure. It is also intended to convey a theological message which is the great glory of God in his creation of a perfect universe. Gothic architecture is a European style of architecture that values height and exhibits an intricate and delicate aesthetic. Gothic style was evolved from Romanesque architecture, a medieval aesthetic characterized by arches, vaulted ceilings, and small stained glass windows. Gothic architecture adapted and adopted these Romanesque elements to produce a new style of building. Classical elements of Gothic architecture. The Gothic style can vary according to location, age, and type of building. It is often characterized by five key architectural elements, which are the large stained glass windows, pointed arches, grave vaults, flying buttresses, and ornate decorations. So the first one is pointed arches. This one is the primary feature of many religious structures. Ample archways can be found in most Gothic churches and cathedrals. So rather than the wide rounded arches characteristic of Romanesque buildings, however, architects working in the Gothic style adopted the tall, thin, pointed arches found in Islamic architecture. The second one is large stained glass windows. So while stained glass windows are found in many places of worship, they are part particularly prevalent in Gothic cathedrals, so featuring meticulously cut colored glass, these kaleidoscopic windows, which are typically either tall and arched lancet windows or round rose windows, are larger than those found in other types of churches. So, Gothic stained glass windows also frequently feature tracery, a decorative type of stone support, and detailed scenes from biblical stories. So, the third one is rib vaults. In order to incorporate higher ceilings and taller windows into their designs, Gothic architectures utilize a new method of structural support called rib vaulting. Rib vaulting involves the use of intersecting barrel vaults, arches placed parallel to one another in order to support a rounded roof. In addition to showcasing a more decorative aesthetic than traditional barrel vaults, these crisscross constructions offer increased support for the sky-high buildings. So the last one is ornate decoration. So this one is the final feature found in Gothic architecture. It presents the ornate decorative elements. So th these include embellished colonnades and colonnettes, sculptural moldings, statues of saints and historical figures, pinnacles and spires, and gargoyles, gothic figures that doubles as water spouts. So unlike Romanesque, Gothic sculpture is more realistic, well crafted and detailed. Gothic sculpture was closely tied to architecture since it was used primarily to decorate the exteriors of cathedrals and other religious buildings. And these two sculptures are the examples of Gothic sculpture. Gargoyles have become one of the most distinctive features of Gothic architectures. Gargoyles were originally designed in 13th century French architecture as a means of disposing of water. International Gothic Style Painting the term international describes a style of medieval art. Gothic also refers to the style of European architecture, sculpture, and some minor arts which link to medieval Romanesque art. So, Gothic style is also known as the beautiful style or the soft style. So, no matter how devotional or religious the subject, its elegance reflects the sophisticated, cosmopolitan nature and pageantry of courtly life. Gothic style is originated in the illuminated manuscript. It also includes architectural frames that reflected the influence of Gothic architecture. So the excellent example for this is the Ars of Mary of Burgundy. This one is produced in Flanders. It contains a miniature of showing Mary of Burgundy in devotion with a wonderful depiction of French Gothic cathedral behind her. Now let's talk about the difference between Romanesque and Gothic art. So shapes of arches Romanesque architectural buildings have rounded arches, while Gothic architecture buildings have pointed arches in them. And the next one is the interiors. Romanesque architectural buildings have small windows and fewer stained glasses, which result in a dark interior. In Gothic architectural buildings, they have large windows and many stained glasses, which result in a light, bright, and airy interior. And lastly, the exterior of each building. So, Romanesque architecture has a minimal design on the exterior of the building, while Gothic architecture has gargoyles and other ornate decorations on the exterior of the building. And that's all for the Gothic and Romanesque period. Today, we're going to discuss Renaissance arts. But before that, I want you to close your eyes and imagine. Imagine that you're walking an aisle at a museum 
watching the different paintings of Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo da Vinci, and many more. It also amazes you the huge sculptures. And you can smell the old book, which brings you to the historical events. So, without further ado, let's start. So, we begin with knowing what is Renaissance. So, the Renaissance is a French word and Renacita is an Italian word. Both means rebirth. The Renaissance was a period when scholars and artists began to investigate what they believed to be a revival of classical learning, literature, and art. The Renaissance also refers to the era in Europe from the 14th to the 16th century in which a new style in painting, sculpture, and architecture developed after the Gothic. Although a religious view of the world continued to play an important role in the lives of Europeans, a growing awareness of the natural world, the individual and collective humanity's worldly existence characterized the Renaissance period. So uh, next, may we know when or where there did it started and ended? So, based on my research, there is some debate over the actual start of the Renaissance. However, it is generally believed to have begun in Italy during the 14th century, after the end of the Middle Ages, and reached its height in the 15th century. The Renaissance spread to the rest of the Europe in the 16th and 17th centuries. So, the Renaissance was an important event in European history that stretched from 14th century to the 17th century. It was also preceded by the Middle Ages and eventually led to a major event of the Age of Enlightenment. So in historical term, the Renaissance is important because it led to a major shift in, in Europeans thought and worldview. So, while the Renaissance is considered to have begun in the city-states of the Italian peninsula in the 14th century, the main ideas of the movement eventually spread to all Europe by the 16th century. The most significant changes that emerge as a result of the Renaissance can be seen in European architecture, art, literature, mathematics, music, philosophy, politics, religion, and science. Historians have identified several causes for the emergence of the Renaissance following the Middle Ages, such as increased interaction between different cultures, the rediscovery of ancient Greek and Roman texts, the emergence of humanism, different artistic and technological innovations, and the impact of conflict and death. So that's it. Next is what materials composed of artwork in Renaissance? So we have here that sculptures were most often carved from marble, but bronze and gold were also used. Paintings were generally completed as frescoes or pigment in water painted directly onto a plaster wall. When artists painted on wood and canvas, they often used tempera pigment mixed with egg yolk so it's actually unbelievable but we have here examples of sculptures this is by michelangelo and the name of this artwork is Peta. so although painting techniques improve immeasurably during the renaissance the renaissance palette mirrored that all the of the medieval age but for three pigments, Naples yellow, smog, and carmine lake, or cochineal. Other reds were vermilion and mother lake, which brought to Europe by crusaders in the 12th century. So the Renaissance color palette also featured Relgar and among the blues, azurite, ultramarine, and indigo. The greens were vendergris, green earth, and malachite, 
the yellows were Naples yellow, Arabnet, and Litin yellow. Renaissance browns were ob obtained from umber, whites were lead white, gypsum, and lime white, and blacks were carbon black and bone black. Here is also examples of paintings during Renaissance. This is by Paolo Veronis, and the name of the artwork is The Wedding at Anna. So you can see there are many colors, and the one I mentioned earlier has on it. Lastly, that I will discuss is the types of Renaissance art. Later on, this will be tackled more deeply. So I can, so this time I will just see you a brief uh, knowledge about types of Renaissance arts. And these are the Renaissance architecture and science, Renaissance painting, Renaissance sculpture, Renaissance music, and lastly is a Renaissance literature. Hi everyone, good day. So today I will be discussing the history of Renaissance, of how it started, how humanism was influenced by the Renaissance art, and lastly I will be discussing the Nevis family. So the beginning of Renaissance art was from darkness to light in the 14th and 17th century during the Middle Ages. And in this period, it is the also beginning of Dark Ages and was started from Italy. And they influenced the Europe that even Europeans made a few advances in science and in arts. So according to my Search, searches and understanding, the Renaissance period is the rebirth of an idea because during the ancient history of Renaissance, that time was so chaotic that everyone was suffering because of wars, pandemics, and other dark happenings in that period. So because of the enlarging ideas of ancient people, they create such new philosophies of ideas in art, which they can which they can learn from it, and they can also spread the learning that they have. The Renaissance period was actually started in Florence, Italy, that conquered the European country because of their wealth, power, and intellectual architecture. And also, it is the beginning of classical and classical ideas and artistic work because of the advanced ideas of arts that they have reflected to their self. The, and also, um, the Renaissance period brought many changes in their political view, to social, to their economic, and to the cultural perspective. Because, because that period, the Renaissance thinkers or the artists or the one who made think were so eager to explore new ideas of the of their richness and the variety of human experience, and also. It, it emphasizes their individual achievement. So without further ado, let's move on and move forward. Um, Renaissance affects the humanism because people get influenced by the arts that even created a artistic or classical art because of what they perceive or reflected to themselves and even um, they have interest in art. And they made it, they make it because they can call their self as, or it is a material that they can call their self that did, that is their greatest achievement. So in that period, they are affected because they adopt the changes of ideas that they get to other people or to the artist or the one who spread our awareness about these arts. So also humanism have many changes and one of that is the way of how they wear a clothes. clothes. And the time people change their clothes into something graceful or kana mga pangdato nga sanina nga bagay nila. And by that, nahimo na siyang traditional kasuutan sa mga European or yeah, European karun. So, um, the Renaissance arts were the Renaissance arts were enlarging that they create a Renaissance art of architecture in science, in painting, and in sculpture. 
uh, also in music and in the lit and in the literature that was also adapted in today's generation. But this Renaissance art keeps in innovating because of the non-stop ideas of people. So, um, the Ren the effect of Renaissance period to humanism have an effect to society. First is the education. Their education were developed and they are taught by the maestro, the time that every people have a chance to get an education, to have knowledge, so, so that they can understand more clearly their outside. <laughs> so second is the literature. Um, in this literature, they can develop their skills in writing, in writing poems or sonnet, and even if they have more knowledge enough, um, they can be write a political writings that happen to their country. So, lastly, is the scholarship. This is the people who have um, independent thinking, or one click or one question they can answer it because they have a wide knowledge and they yeah wide knowledge that's all hello everyone so i will be tackling my last topic which is the medici family so first of all the medici family was the renaissance most powerful family in the period because of the wealth power and even became a dynasty but na andrew put ang ilahang inheritance or pag ruled sa ethely when the last ruler sa ilahang pamilya, wala na kaanak o lalaki. So, the Medici family controlled Florence, Italy for over two centuries. That played a large part in patronage of arts and today, political development of their country. So, the first man who brought his family to Florence is see, Giovanni di Medici. Um, she was rich because of her family business and he he is a banker at the time so her son cosimo de medici was the first medici who ruled florence that gave a good impact to their country and also to the people because they spread they spread awareness of what is renaissance art that adapt that na adapt naman po sa mga tao so their generosity helped famous artists to succeed in arts such as Michelangelo, Raphael, and Donatello. Um, they support it financially and fund it because <clears throat> they know that the skills of this artist could be more widened and ma koan pasiya ma abot pa siya sa bisan asa because of their knowledge in arts so <clears throat> um the medici family um spread the development of renaissance to rome and to europe that changed their way of living because of the interest in arts <clears throat> so the greatest contribution to renaissance art of medici family is an um they are the founder to arts to every artist who are who are good in arts or who are interested in arts um sila ang mag support like for example nila michelangelo and rafael donatello gisuportahan nila nila financially para mahuman ang ilahang arts or ma widely known sa mga tao or katong or basin um kuangan sa mga materials so muhatag sila financially para mahuman dito nga art so um also um, medici family influence humanism yes then lastly is because of renaissance art or because of their pamamahala sa renaissance period um their economic i mean their economy of their country um na develop and become a richest country yes so i think that would be all i will not tackle more the history of medici family as long as i as long as i highlighted what we tackle of their greatest contribution to renaissance arts and let's have feverose to discuss her topic 
Renaissance architecture is the architecture of the period between the early 15th and early 17th centuries in the French regions of Europe, demonstrating a conscious revival and development of certain elements of ancient Greek and Roman thought of material culture. So apparently, Renaissance architecture adopted distinguishing features of classical Roman architecture. However, the forms and purposes of buildings had changed over time. And also the structures of cities, which is reflected in the fusion of classical and 18th century forms. So the primary features of 16th century structures, which fuse classical Roman technique with Renaissance aesthetics, were based in several foundational architecture concepts, such as facades, columns, pilasters, arcs, vaults, domes, windows, and walls. So as you can see in the picture, that is the Florence city, Italy. So... Um, that is one of the example of Renaissance architecture because the Italian Renaissance was um, a period of Italian history covering the 15th and 16th centuries. So the period is known for the development of a culture that spreads across Europe and marked transition from the Middle Ages to modernity. So the Renaissance um, originally began in Tuscany in central Italy and was centered in the city of Florence. So the Florence city was considered as the birthplace of the Renaissance, becoming a major artistic, cultural, commercial, political, economic, and financial center. So Renaissance architecture also incorporated columns and pilasters using Roman orders of columns, such as Tuscan, Doric, Ionic, Corinthian, and Composite as models. So the orders can either be structural, supporting an arcade or architrave, or purely decorative set against a wall in the form of pilasters, during the Renaissance. So during the Renaissance, architects aim to use columns, pilasters, and entablatures as an integrated system. So if nakanto mo sa Temple of Leia, maka-notice mo nga like, naay ka ng moral kusti kusti gani. Basta mo na siya na. Kanang, kung sa Temple of Leia, dili kayo siya detailed. Iganto ninyo sa Italy, grabe ka detailed. Okay. Since birthplace mo kung siya sa Renaissance, usa siya sa ilang culture. Therefore, ilang yun ay emphasize Babot na sila ka ng criteria if mag-tupod o building or like church, mga na na. So, mara siya. So, the example that I have here is the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. So, domes is frequently used in this period, both as very large structural features that is visible from the exterior, and also as a mean of roofing smaller spaces where they are only visible internally. So, domes were used in important structures such as the Pantheon, during antiquity, but had been used only rarely in the Middle Ages. So after the success of the dome in Brunel Shee's design for the Florence Cathedral, it is used for the plan for St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, and the dome became an indispensable element in the Renaissance church architecture and current over the Baroque. So next, let us proceed to the Italian Renaissance or Renaissance painting. So in this painting or in this period, beginning in the late 13th centuries and flourishing from the early 15th to late 16th centuries, occurring in the Italian peninsula, which was at that time divided into many political states. So the painters of Renaissance Italy was often attached to the particular courts and loyalties to particular towns and it also impacted their um, diplomatic status and the disseminating artistic and philosophical ideas. So as what I have said earlier, um, the city of Florence in Tuscany is renowned as the birthplace of the Renaissance or in particular of the Renaissance painting. Next is the, um, the division of Italian Renaissance painting in the four periods. So first is the Proto-Renaissance which began with the professional life of the painter Giotto and includes the Theo Gabi, Arcagna or Arcania, I don't know how to read that, and Alticia. Next is the early Renaissance style, which was started by Masaccio and then further developed by Fra Angelico Paolo Ocello, Piero della Francesca, Sandro Botticelli Virocho, Domenico Gerlandaio, and Giovanni Bellini. Next is the High Renaissance period, which was led by um, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, Andrea del Sarto, Correggio, or Giorgion, and the latter works of Giovanni Bellini and Titian. And the last one is the Mannerist period, which was dealt with a separate article included the latter works of Michelangelo, as well as Contormo, Parmigianino, Bronzino, and Tentoretto. 
So the dates of this period represent the overall trend in Italian painting and do not cover all painters as the lives of individual artists and their personal styles overlap this period. So um, um, the meaning of this one is that um, kaning mga painters nga na mention there yung kayo, hindi siya mautanan ang painter, uh, painters na involved sa Renaissance period. Okay, um, you know, in this period, a lot of artists have discovered their potentials and created artworks. But um, nabilong ilahang art style there is a uh, different periods nga na mention ako earlier. So um, each period there has artists, but kani sila nga mga artists, dili nila siya mao ang kanang sila ra ang kanang nagkuan sa dira nga period. So naapoy na ila in artists na wala na mention dere, but since ilahang style nagka overlap man sa kaning period, um, what means by overlap is that panalitan si artist one kay kanang yang style kay kanang mix ang proto renaissance o ang uh, high renaissance so nag like, overlap sila as the um, time evolve ilang style kay nag overlap so like for example si um pontormo from the manierist period nagkuha ko siyang style or idea gikan sa proto renaissance so much painting of the renaissance period was commissioned by the church or the catholic church so the example that i have here is the marriage of the virgin by rafael or also known as Las Posalizio. It is an oil painting by the Italian High Renaissance artist, which is named Raphael. So the painting was completed on 1504 for the Franciscan Church of San Francisco. So the painting depicts a marriage ceremony between Mary and Joseph. So this painting has changed hands several times before settling on 1806 at Penicota. So before Sian Abot sa Penicota, Nag-inis-ilis o ka ng tao nga nagunit ani niya, gipasapasahan siya. So through this various relocation, the painting was damaged and the panel had several cracks in the upper half while there was rippling and bowing throughout. So Italian artist Giuseppe Molteni retained to repair it on November 1857 and chose to preserve the panel rather than transfer the painting to canvas and he spent months flattening the panel and hydrating it to overcome the damage of desiccation. So this decision and part of Molteni has permitted 20th century art historians to use inferred reflectography to study the underdrawing unit the completed artwork. So Molteni also undertook to clean the surface of the pen painting, which had been subjected to restoration before. So he did not clean it aggressively kay nagdosya ba na ka na nasira kay ka ng sige bang siya relocate so nanadyo siya yung mga crafts, mga dents, nana. And he wanted to be sure that the elements of the original painting was preserved. So there have been several historians who have disputed that Pero Gino's marriage of the Virgin preceded Raphael's. And some who have suggested that the painting was not Pero Gino's at all, but instead produced after Raphael by one of Pero Gino's followers. So some historians have to nga kang Pero Gino ni artwork and some of them opposed and disputed na kay Rafael Judao to and influence lang siya sa work ni Pero Gino kay iya ka man ang teacher so follower as iya and iya ang style kay na influence sa ka Pero Gino. Okay, so as what I have always mentioned before, um, Florence City is considered as the birthplace of Renaissance and right now for the um, Renaissance culture, it is considered as the cradle of the Renaissance because it is one of the richest city and the wealthiest city among the um, Renaissance period. And the period wherein it was marked by great increase in patronage sculpture by the state of public art by wealthy patrons for their homes. So public sculpture becomes a um, crucial element in the appearance of these historic city centers. So additionally, portrait sculpture, particular bust, became usually popular in the forums. Okay, so um, in this period, there has begun a competition called the Doors for the Florence Baptist Tree in 1403, wherein the models have been submitted by the winners. And the winners at that time was Lorenzo Galberti, because Galberti's bronze door consists of 28 panels depicting scenes from the life of Christ and four evangelists and the Church of Father St. Ambrose, Jeremy, Gregory, and Augustine. So they took 21 years to complete and still stand at the northern entrance of the baptistry. So although they are eclipsed by the splendor of his second pair of gates for the eastern entrance, which Michelangelo dubbed the gates of paradise. 
So these new doors were commissioned in 1,425 and built over a 27-year period. Okay, so another deeply influential sculptor from Florence was Donatello. He is best known for his work in bas relief, a form of a shallow relief that he used as a medium for the incorporation of significant 15th centuries, sculptural development in pers perspectival illusion. And Donatello received his early artistic training in Goldsmith's workshop and then trained briefly in Gilberti's studio before undertaking a trip to Rome with Filippo Brunelschi. So he undertook the study and excavation of Roman architecture and sculpture. So Roman, Roman art became the single most important influence on Donatello's work. His foremost um, sponsor was Cosimo de' Medici, the city's great patron of art. So Donatello created his bronze David for Cosimo's court in the Place de' Medici, and it was conceived entirely in the round and independent of any architectural surroundings. So it was the known first freestanding wood statue produced since antiquity and represented an allegory of civic virtues, overcoming brutality and ignorance. So this sculpture represented a particularly important development in Renaissance sculpture and the production of sculpture independent for the architecture. So hold on. Okay, so this genius made him an important figure in early Italian Renaissance period. So this was sculpted between 1432 to 1432. And the bronze is an example of his mature work. And it is currently located in the Bargello's Palace and Museum. So thank you, Ms. Feli. So let's continue to the other Renaissance arts. So we have here Renaissance music. Renaissance music is a music written in Europe during the Renaissance. Consensus among music historians with notable descent has been to start the era around 14th century with the end of the medieval era and to close it around 16th century. With the beginning of the Baroque period, therefore, commencing the musical Renaissance about a hundred years after the beginning of the Renaissance as understood in other disciplines. So, in the other arts, the music of the period was significantly influenced by the developments which define the early modern period. The rise of humanistic thought, the recovery of the literary and artistic heritage of ancient Greece and Rome, increased innovation and discovery, the growth of commercial enterprise, the rise of a burgess class, and the Protestant Reformation. From this changing society emerged a common unifying musical language, in particular, the polyphonic style of the Franco-Flemish school. So here is William Byrd as one of the famous composer in Renaissance music. William Byrd is perhaps the greatest English composer of all time, with hundreds of individual works. Byrd seemingly mastered every style of music that existed during his lifetime outshining Orlando de Lassus and Giovanni Palestrina. He was a pupil working under Thomas Thales. Apart from his choral works, Beard is considered by many to be the first genius of the keyboard. Many of his piano works can be found in My Lady Nivelle's book and the Parthianic. So this is William Beard and one of his artwork, which is Sing Joyfully, who he composed. So, the next Renaissance art is Renaissance literature. The earliest Renaissance literature appeared in 14th century in Italy. Dante, Petrarch, and Machiavelli are notable examples of Italian Renaissance writers. From Italy, the influence of the Renaissance spread at different rates to other countries and continued to spread throughout Europe in 17th century. The English Renaissance and the Renaissance in Scotland date from the late 15th century to the early 17th century. In Northern Europe, the scholarly writings of Erasmus, the plays of Shakespeare, the poem of Edmund Spencer, and the writings of Sir Philip Sidney may be considered Renaissance in character. The, lyric, the literature of the Renaissance was written within the general movement of the Renaissance that arose in 13th century 
Italy and continued until the 16th century while being diffused into the Western world. So it is characterized by the adoption of a humanist philosophy and the recovery of the classical literature of antiquity and benefited from the spread of printing in the latter part of the 15th century. Also, for the writers of the Renaissance, Greco-Roman inspiration was shown both in the themes of the writing and in the literary forms they use. The world was considered from an anthropocentric perspective. Platonic ideas were revived and put to the service of Christianity. The search for pleasures of the senses and a critical and rational spirit completed the ideological panorama of the period. New literary genera such as the essay and new metrical forms such as the sonnet and Spenserian stanza made their appearance. So this is one of the famous author in Renaissance literature. This is Giovanni Boccaccio. He became a major author in his own right. His major work was the Decameron, a collection of 100 stories told by 10 storytellers who have fled to the outskirts of Florence to escape the Black Plague over 10 nights. The Decameron in particular and Boccaccio's work in general were a major source of in inspiration and plots for many English authors in the Renaissance, including Geoffrey Chaucer and William Shakespeare. So, the various tales of love in the Decameron ranged from the erotic to the tragic. Tales of wit, practical jokes, and life lessons contribute to the mosaic. In addition to its literary value and widespread influence, it provides a document of life at the time, written in the vernacular of the Florentine language, that considered a masterpiece considered a masterpiece of classical early Italian. So this is Giovanni Boccaccio and his artwork, which is the Decameron. So that's all for the Renaissance arts. So we will now go to Nicole to explain the Renaissance exploration. Hello, I'm Nicole Camero and I'll be tackling about the overall impact of Renaissance period. Renaissance or Renaissance period is considered the time of rebirth. The word Renaissance means rebirth. It began in Italy around 1350, spreading across the Europe over the next two centuries. In this period, there were new religious forms, so they didn't just stick with the Roman Catholic religion. Second is there were improvements in science, just as geography, astronomy, chemistry, physics, mathematics, manufacturing, anatomy, and engineering. Global expression also opened up new lands to improve trade routes. There were also improvements in art. Renaissance art is marked by a gradual shift from the abstract forms of the medieval period to the representational forms of the 15th century. So as what I have said earlier, there was an emergence of new religion form in this period. So, including the Christianity, with the main church or the main religion, which is the Roman Catholic. But then there were individuals or personalities that challenged or questioned the Roman Catholic religion. And this was the start or the formation of the protestantism and then there was also the formation of humanism which is the belief that even without religion uh, we can still live a peaceful and moral life humanism stresses the importance of bodies and dignity it is a belief now without religion theism or any supernatural beliefs we can still live in morality so it is not theistic so there they don't believe in any higher power or any supernatural beliefs Humanism is really a highlight of Renaissance because Renaissance is best known for its development of humanism. To generalize, Renaissance art focuses on human, beauty, nature, and biblical themes. The characteristics of Renaissance art that changed the world includes the willingness to learn and explore, the faith in the nobility of men, such as humanism, the discovery of and mastery of the inner perspective, the rebirth of naturalism, and secularism. The Renaissance art also sought to capture the experience of the individuals and the beauty and mystery of the natural world. Renaissance art is marked by a gradual shift from the abstract forms of the medieval period to the representational forms of the 15th century. So, ang kasagaran nga uh, subject sa Renaissance art is biblical scenes. Tungod sa uh, dominance of uh, the Roman Catholic Church in this period. So, even though Renaissance took primarily on Italy, it's uh, innovation, ideas such as their arts, architecture, it spread across Europe and also was known around the world. 
The art during this time is known for its realistic linear perspective and its innovative light and dark shadowing. So you can see in the picture uh, that there is a center that is creating uh, the, the, the lines or the invisible lines uh, creates a uh, perspective that even though it is uh, uh, created in a flat surface, we can see the illusion, the illusion that there is depth in it. You know? So linear perspective is the system of creating illusion of depth in a flat surface. Perspective was an achievement in this period. Perspective in arts is drawing solid objects in a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of the height, width, depth, and position in relation to each other when viewed in a particular point. The five major themes of Renaissance were humanism, secularism, individualism, rationalism, and virtue. So I've already talked about humanism, so let's proceed to secularism. So secularism is the separation of state from religious institutions. Well, individualism is the social theory uh, that favors freedom of individuals rather than being controlled by a collective uh, collective institution or state control. And uh, next is rationalism. So rationalism is the belief or theory that opinions and actions should be based on reason and knowledge rather than on religious belief, while virtue is a knowledge of or expertise in defined arts. So Renaissance is mostly about arts, humanities, religion, individuals trying to stand out, science and church authority and being the best at things. In the Renaissance period, there were some major developments, including in astronomy, such as the Copernican Revolution by Nicolaus Copernicus and the revolutionary telescopic discoveries of Galileo Galilei. There were also development in humanist philosophy, the printing press, and the use of vernacular language in writing. So Dante Alighieri was the one who started this uh, use of vernacular language. Moniangi gamit ni Dante Alighieri para dagan ang makasabot throughout the Europe and not only sa certain sa lugares like sa Italy lang. And this, uh, because of the use of this vernacular language, kanang naka-help yun ni para ma-spread ang literature o uh, mas masabdan sa mga tao sa Europe ang mga ipang buhat ni Nia o sa uban mga writers. So, Dante Alighieri is very known for his uh, uh, literature, which is Dante's Inferno. There were also improvements and uh, discoveries of new sculpture technique and in painting. And because of the world exploration, they also discovered new lands for uh, the improvement of their trades. And in the late Renaissance, the Shakespeare's works, of course. The Medici family plays a very important role in the flourishing of the Renaissance art in this Renaissance period. So, they are known as the House of Medici, first attained wealth and political power in Florence in the 13th century through its success in commerce and banking. The Medici family had numerous contributions to humanism. So Cosimo de Medici was the first one to encourage uh, humanism in the Medici family. He is the one who patronized artists, architects, and scholars. Because of the wealth of Medici family, they sponsored or supported uh, a lot of uh, artists, architects, and scientists. Some of the greatest artists supported by the Medici family are Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. So Leonardo da Vinci was a very famous Italian polymath. So he, he is very diverse. He has a lot of uh, he's engaged in a lot of uh, branches of science and arts. Leonardo da Vinci's contribution to the aesthetic and techniques of high Renaissance art evolved early Renaissance for beers such as linear perspective, chiaroscuro. So chiaroscuro is uh, the treatment of light and shade in painting. And next is naturalism and emotional expressionism. So. Leonardo da Vinci is very known or very well known for his art The Last Supper and also uh, the Mona Lisa. Next is Michelangelo. Michelangelo's full name is Michelangelo di Lodovico Bonarotti Simoni, known simply as Michelangelo. So he was an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet of high renaissance born in the Republic of Florence. So uh, Michelangelo spent the majority of his life studying the human form and was obsessed with the body being a physical representation of the soul. So compared to Leonardo da Vinci, which is very diverse and is connected to a uh, lot of branches in science and uh, arts, Michelangelo is focused on his arts like sculpture, painting, and architecture. He's also a poet of high Renaissance. Renaissance. And he, Michelangelo produced uh, the three pieces that are considered some of the greatest works of art in history, such as the Pita. Pita is the sculpture where Mother Mary is holding uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I know that uh, you guys are very familiar with that. And the next is the ceiling of Sistine Chapel and the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. So 
uh, one of the example that I've shown here is the creation of Adam. So the creation of Adam is part of the Sistine Chapel, but it is uh, the very uh, famous one of his art. So the last artist we will talk about is Raphael. Raffaello Sanzio de Orvino, known as Raphael, was an Italian painter and architect of the High Renaissance. His work is admired for his clarity of form, ease of composition, and visual achievement of the Neoplatonic ideal of human grandeur. He is very famous for being the painter of the Vatican walls. So one of the uh, painted, one of the uh, masterpiece in the painted wall was the School of Athens, uh, that was created on 1509 to 1511. Lastly, we'll talk about the very important invention of the Renaissance period, which is the invention of the printing press. So, important kaya ni Shakai, tungkol ani, naging, naging cheaper ang book publication, and it also helped the uh, flourishing of the literature in the Renaissance period that helped uh, the Europe and also helped uh, globally. The Renaissance really had a great impact in arts. The paintings and architecture in this period was really known around the world for its perfection. The Renaissance promoted the rediscovery of classical philosophy, literature, and art. It created a path that led to what we consider modernity and subsequently the contemporary world. This have been the Gupti. Thank you for listening.